There is a remarkable letter that has found its way to the West. A letter from the Iron Dragon to his sister. It reads, My dearest sister Miao Ying, What an utterly pitiable spectacle your desperate plea for aid has become amidst my relentless campaigns against the wretched rat men, despicable dark elves, and loathsome undead. It is with a morbid fascination that I indulge your arrogance and self-importance. As I lead our forces in battle, you have the audacity to disturb my efforts with your dire tale of chaos forces breaching the Great Bastion. It is almost comical how you speak of this great defense as if it were your personal plaything. Have you forgotten that our father entrusted you with the defense of that monumental structure, a position of unparalleled power and pride? It appears you have not only forgotten but utterly failed at your duty. Miao Ying, you have always been a spoiled, entitled brat, blissfully ignorant of the sacrifices our people make in times of turmoil. The Great Bastion, a symbol of our people's resolve, has been entrusted to your care, and you have proven yourself unworthy of that responsibility. Your incompetence sickens me as much as your arrogance. I shall not grant aid lightly, dear sister. Nay, I shall do so only under the condition that you humiliate yourself, acknowledging your utter ineptitude and misplaced pride. It is time you recognize the gravity of your failures and your inability to fulfill our father's trust. Only when you have groveled at the feet of your betters, demonstrating the humility you so desperately lack, Will I even contemplate sending reinforcements to protect what you have neglected? For now, I shall continue my campaign against our foes, resolute in my commitment to our people's welfare, even as you remain a laughable and ineffectual ruler. May you one day grasp the weight of your failures, though I remain skeptical. Signed, Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, true defender of Grand Cathay. Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about Grand Cafe in Total War Warhammer 3, patch 4.0, and about one of the biggest dilemmas that Grand Cafe not has in their campaigns. Specifically if you're playing Xiao Ming or Yuan Bo. Miao Ying doesn't have this. In fact, she's the reason behind this dilemma because her AI is, well, frankly, in a lot of ways, pretty damn awful. Actually, at this point, I might just confederate her and get rid of the whole nightmare in this campaign. So, what is the issue that I'm talking about? And what is the dilemma? The dilemma it concerns the Great Bastion. The problems that get created with the Great Bastion and what you can do about it. So, here's, here's what happens. Before Patch 4.0 in Immortal Empires, Village was never going to take the Great Bastion. Very rarely have I ever seen him do it. Granted, I always play on Legendary very hard in any serious campaign, and I've never seen Village really succeed over here past the Great Bastion. He has over here in this particular campaign, in fact his vassals have also succeeded at the Dragon Gate, but with the exception of this kind of circumstance, it almost never occurs. It, or it almost never occurred before patch 4.0. Now here's what I think Creative Assembly has done with patch 4.0. They've hard-coded Village and his vassals, but Village in particular, to almost always take the Great Bastion. So we're talking about the Snake Gate, Dragon Gate. It doesn't have to be all the gates, but at least one of the gates will almost certainly fall. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be a problem for a Grand Cafe, except when it kind of is a problem, because it harkens back to what would always happen in Realms of Chaos when that came out. You would almost never want to play a campaign in Realms of Chaos as Yao Ming, as opposed to Miao Ying, because although he was always better than his sister in a lot of substantial ways, the issue that would be created is that she would always let the Kurgan pass the Great Bastion, and they would just start harassing the crap out of you with their... Or, uh, with, with their rogue armies. That's no longer a problem that you have to deal with uh, in the same way in Immortal Empires because the Kurgans that spawn are not really that much of an issue. So the dilemma is this. What do you do about the Great Bastion as Yan Bo or uh, Xiao Ming? Do you try and confederate the Imperial Wardens and try before Village wipes them out? You can, by the way, if you meet them. In this campaign, I meet, met them very late, late. But do you go do something like declaring war on these factions and then eventually, because you've got that military alliance and they're under a significant amount of pressure, they'll be willing to confederate? The AI 
Autoresolve is very much against these guys. It's not a question about the garrison capability, it's a question about, like, which AI faction is better. Because remember, AI factions, Legendary Lord factions, do have, apparently, an Autoresolve benefit against minor factions, which Imperial Wardens certainly are. Now, here's where the issue kicks in, and the dilemma kicks in. If you do so, and you stop Village Cold, you can certainly secure the border, though you will be spending resources, but you also gain resources from defeated armies. Or you can lose, I might add. That's also a real possibility. Depends on how you do it, when you do it, what's the dynamic then. But it's not really too much of a threat if you're playing Xiao Ming or Yan Bo. The problem is, the problem is that if you hold the Great Bastion, and you're kind of screwing yourself over as a Cafean player. The reason is that when you're playing Cafe, this particular result is what you want to aim for. You want to confederate Miao Ying. Because although she's worthless in the hands of the AI for many clear and obvious reasons, she is still a legendary lord who has a special skill line that will greatly aid you in the rest of your campaign. So you do want to get your grub grubby little paws on her. And you will also get a uh, Nangao. So you'll almost certainly want to confederate her. But if you hold the Great Bastion, you will find yourself in a situation where that's nev almost never going to happen. The reason that's almost never going to happen if you hold the Great Bastion is because of what it takes to confederate uh, one of these factions, especially a Legendary Lord faction. Like a lot of people in Warhammer 3 have had issues with confederating Xiao Ming if you're, they're playing Miao Ying or vice versa. The key to confederation is that you need to get a good relation with the faction you're trying to confederate, so a military alliance is best, but then you also need them to be weak. So that means less territory, that means losing armies, that means being put on the defensive in a campaign, and so on and so forth. So if you're holding the Great Bastion, then Miao Ying no longer has any rival, and she'll just basically stay in Gunpowder Road and in Lands of Stone and Steel while you're trying to confederate her and never really succeeding with that. That is the problem that it creates. But of course, holding the Great Bastion means Zeta and Village are not going to be able to achieve much in, in their campaign. And you're going to be able to stop them, maybe even completely wipe them out. Hell, if you're willing to wait a uh, long enough time, Grimgore might just solve the issue for you by going to war against Zaytan. And once he does so, it's GG for Zaytan, more or less. I mean, look at Grimgore. He's got three entire armies over here. He is certainly not going to stop anytime soon in this, uh, camp in this particular campaign. And mind you, this is still like he's gonna get four armies, five more, and he's gonna be, and he's gonna pressure Zaytan because he has a border with him, and unless he ends up in a war with Kolek. Okay, so that's one one thing you can do. You can try and hold the Great Bastion, but it makes your confederation harder to achieve with Miao Ying, which you ultimately want to do, even though she is a spoiled princess. Uh, the other choice is to deliberately let the Great Bastion fall. You deliberately let it by not... You, you, you won't be able to reinforce the Xiao Bo and Xiao Ming before they fall, so what you want to do in order to prevent its fall is you want to confederate with them. And then fight the battle. If you're lucky, you get the full stack of troops, and with the full stack in the garrison, there's no chance that the village is going to be able to defeat you. He would need to send a significant number of forces to do so, and even then, the chance of him doing so if you're any kind of competent player. Okay, so that's one choice, creates issues, you, but you can't let it fall. So if you let it fall, you create another set of problems, because the Great Bastion it offers a lot of possibilities in terms of recruitment, unit experience, maintaining an entire army over there. You ultimately do care about maintaining the Great Bastion, because as Cafe, if you deal with all of the issues in Cafe, like in this particular campaign at turn 20, like it's just basically Lokir is finished, his armies are destroyed and annihilated, Snitch is dead, uh, that just leaves Nakai, and uh, that just leaves Nakai and and the Wood Elves over here. My western flank is relatively secure. I have a defensive alliance with uh, with Greece, so I want in this campaign to secure the uh, to eventually secure the Great Bastion for all the benefits it has, and to also ultimately secure my northern border 
uh, for when I do take control over this entire area. But if you let it fall, you have to rebuild it from scratch, and you're also going to let Village and his vassals and Zaytan roam free through all of this territory, creating another set of issues. Now, if you're playing Xiao Ming or Yan Bo, that's not really too brutal to do so. But in this particular campaign, I did delib I did choose not to form an alliance. Like the key here is like you just go to Imperial Wardens, you get the defensive or military alliance by declaring war against. Uh, village and maybe Zaytan in this case, uh, and then eventually they'll offer a confederation. That's that's really the key. I've avoided doing that, and because I avoided doing that, village and village ended up wiping out Xiao Ming, uh, Miao Ying's main army, which in turn allowed me to confederate her. That's the key, by the way. Like, you want to confederate the faction, you need to. Play your campaign in such a way that they're going to end up being vulnerable, they're going to end up being weak, and that's how you confederate Ulf one. that's how you confederate Cafe, or at least the Legendary Lore faction. Minor factions are going to be far more likely to accept confederation, so I'm not really worried in this game, uh, campaign about the, like, the Jade Custodian. It's going to take me longer because of how the campaign played out, but I'm not really worried about how that's ultimately going to play out over there. So you, you have that choice, you have the dilemma. What do I think is the better solution? Well, I think letting the spoiled brat have to... Uh, I think letting the spoiled brat over here in the north have to actually do some fighting in her campaign, even though you know she, she's going to lose, is probably the better decision. It makes it easier to confederate, you'll gain an army like I have here, and you'll gain a settlement... And Miao Ying herself is also going to be more experienced in the long term, because while she's obviously going to end up dead, she's going to be potentially a higher rank for doing so. In fact, there is an argument to be made that one of the things you might want to do is let Snitch roam free if he put, pre puts pressure on Miao Ying. Although Miao Ying can defeat Snitch under the control of the eye, it's just Village can destroy her. Now, another thing, uh, another problem, though, with Miao Ying when under control of the eye, so if, imagine the situation where... Village gates the gate. There seems to be an issue with Miao Ying's AI where she's unlikely to uh, try and take back the Great Bastion. For whatever reason, AI factions don't want to fight over the Great Bastion. It's the garrison situation, of course. It's a formidable defensive fortress, and AI is infamously known in Warhammer 3 for being unwilling to attack walled settlements. They fix that by basically hardcoding village, but Miao Ying is not hardcoded to respond to that. That's what creates the problem, if you will. That's why uh, this that that's why village breaking through the Great Bastion is such a problem, and why Miao Ying is ultimately going to suffer from it. Because until village declares war on her, and even when he declares war on her, he's going to be the one deciding the battles. Like the AI vill under village is going to be the one marching south against Miao Ying. Whereas Miao Ying is just going to sit there, even if she has the armies to annihilate village, she's just going to sit there on her ass doing absolutely nothing. Y you, can see, you can see this in certain campaigns where like, she might have three, four sacks within her provinces and just doing absolutely nothing in, uh, against the north to attack the north, to take the territory. Because like, look at the situation. Like, yeah, Miao Ying did lose an army, of course, but she's just not going to be able uh, to deal with the problems. There's pros and cons. I would personally, I've come to the conclusion that letting the Great Bastion fall is probably the better choice, especially if you avoid the war with Village. Though, or at least letting a part of it, even if you do gain, like, if you can gain at least one of the gates, that is a really good benefit in your campaign. Because, again, unit recruitment, unit ranks, growth, etc. Just, just many options. Like, in fact, when I first played my cafe campaigns, because the first two campaigns I finished of Warhammer Free and Realms of Gas were as Miao Ying and as Katrin. And when I finished my... Uh, in my Miao Ying campaign, I ended up recruiting all of the higher tier units that I did through the Great Bastion, because it can grow faster, it can give you the, a bunch of recruitment benefits, so there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do so. That's where I stand on this issue. Quasi Senior signing out, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.